Marhaban. In this video, we'll take advantage of the basic logic behind AND and OR to understand how standard Boolean equations are written. This will allow us to define min terms and max terms. Then, in the next video, we will be formalizing the conversion between truth tables and Boolean equations in canonical forms. Let's look at this first puzzle. Think back to how the AND operator and NOT operator work and try to find the set of values for x, y, and z that would make this equation true. Pause the video until you figure it out. The only way to make this work is if x equals 0, y equals 1, and z equals 1. Why? Well, let's just sub in those values. The x value is complemented, so the 0 turns into a 1. y and z just remain 1. Then we AND all 1's together. The result is a 1. This is the only set of values for x, y, and z that would work. Let's see what happens if we change one of the values. If y equals 0, then we have a 0 as an input to the AND. AND logic is only true if all of the inputs are true. So this would guarantee an output of 0. When we see multiple literals ANDed together, we call it a product term. In general, a product term has many sets of inputs that would cause it to output false, and only one special set of inputs that cause it to output true. Now take some time on the second puzzle, featuring the OR operation. What is the set of values that would cause this expression to equal zero? Pause the video until you figure it out. The only way to make this work is if x equals 0, y equals 1, and z equals 0. We can see this proved by subbing in those values. The y value is complemented, so this 1 turns into a 0. Then we have all zeros or together. That produces an output of 0. Again, this is a unique set of values. Any changes to the inputs and we get a different result. OR logic will be true if at least one input is true. So if we happen to set z equals 1, then the whole expression becomes true. When we see multiple literals OR together, we call it a SUM term. In general, a SUM term has many sets of inputs that would cause it to output true, and only one special set of inputs that cause it to output false. Let's build on those ideas. Here we have two product terms with an OR in between them. Therefore, there will be two special sets of values that cause A to equal 1. Can you find both sets? Pause the video until you do. To find one set, look at one product term. The first product is true only if x equals 0, y equals 1, and z equals 1. x must be 0 because it is being complemented. Similarly, the second product is true only if x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 1. What happens if one of these product terms is true? Then it would make the final output a become true. One ORed with anything produces a 1. But if we chose any other set of inputs, then each product term equals 0. As a result, we get 0 or 0, which produces 0. We've just summarized the outputs verbally. Let's formalize it in a truth table. Since we have three inputs, x, y, and z, this truth table has eight rows. Be sure to list the input combinations as a binary count. In which rows is the output true? In those special cases we already identified. So first at x equals 0, y equals 1, z equals 1. And also x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 1. For all of the other cases, or rows, the output is zero. Let's now try to apply what we learned to more directly translate from this Boolean equation into a truth table. I'll show the result and then explain where it comes from. Since there are three input variables, I set up the table with eight rows. Then I fill in ones to the output column that correspond with each product term in the equation. 
the only way x prime y z prime equals 1 is when x equals 0, y equals 1, and z equals 0. So that's where this one comes from. I apply the same idea for x prime y z and x y z. Then I fill in zeros for all the other rows and the table is complete. The formal term for product terms that contain every input variable is min term. We notice that each min term corresponds with a single one in the output column. We also notice that for product terms a complemented input variable is converted to an input zero while an uncomplemented input variable is converted to an input one. For example, this x prime connects to this zero and the y, no prime, connects to this one. Let's look at the other side of the coin, sum terms instead of product terms. Because of the flip logic between and and or, the patterns we noticed before will all be opposites now. Try out this puzzle. What are the three special sets of values that would make c equal zero? Pause the video. Because all of these sum terms are being anded together, if any one of them is zero, the whole expression becomes zero. So to find the special sets of numbers, we look at each sum term individually. To make this first sum term zero, then x, y, and z all must be zero. To make the next sum term zero, then we must have x equals one, y equals one, and z equals zero. Why must x equals one? Because its value gets complemented. If we sub in this set, we find that we are ultimately oring three zeros. The same logic is used to give us the final set. Let's say we plugged in the set x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals zero. Then this first sum term equals zero, the next sum term is one, and the last sum term is one. As a result, we get zero and one and one, which equals zero. Really, we didn't need to evaluate the last two sum terms. Since one of the values being added together was zero, we already knew the final result would be zero. That same idea holds for any of the other special sets we identified. But for any other set of values, say all of x, y, and z are one, then the equation would be one and one and one, and the output is true. This can all be converted into a truth table. Each of the sum terms tells us where a zero is located for the output. The first set corresponds with this top row. The next set says that when x equals one, y equals one, and z equals zero, then the output will be zero. And the last set corresponds with row zero, one, one, with an output of zero. All remaining rows get an output of one. So now let's try directly translating from the product of sums equation into a truth table. First step, as always, is to set up the table with the correct number of inputs and a binary count. Then we fill in the output column. The sum terms point to the zeros. How can we force this first sum term to equal zero? By setting x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals one. That takes us straight to row zero, zero, one, with an output of zero. The middle sum term produces zero when x equals one, y equals one, and z equals zero. That brings us to this row. And the final sum term produces zero when x equals one, y equals one, and z equals one. That means the bottom row has an output of zero. The formal term for sum terms that contain every input variable is max term. We notice that each max term corresponds with a single zero in the output column, just the opposite of what we saw with min terms. We also notice that for some terms, a complemented input variable is converted to an input one, while an uncomplemented input variable is converted to an input zero. For example, this x connects to this zero and the z prime connects to this one. All of these ideas can easily get jumbled in our brains when we try to take it in at once. 
When you get confused, I encourage you to refer back to the simple starting puzzles in this video. We are applying the basic logic of AND and OR to tell us whether each term becomes a 0 or 1.